Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Alright, well that was a pretty dull transfer window by all accounts, wasn't it? Listen, for this one, let's step away from the Premier League for a minute and let me take a look at the weirdest deals that went on across Europe. Julian Weigel to Benfica. Here's Julian Weigel. He looks quite happy to be signing for Benfica, right? Yeah, he's probably hating every minute on the inside. It only feels like five minutes ago this guy had the palm of Europe eating out of his palm. The lad has been linked to a Man City, PSG, but no. The Borussia Dortmund midfielder has instead of up for Benfica in a £17 million deal. Now fair enough, Benfica aren't exactly a tin pot club, but really, at the age of 24, you've decided to wind up in the dregs of the Portuguese league, a division where top class players can't wait to get out of? Poor old Julian Weigel. Zlatan Ibrahimovic to AC Milan. Now, many days, this wasn't exactly a surprise, considering Zlatan Ibrahimovic has always said how much he loved his time in Milan, but really, is this where AC Milan are in life? I know he was once a great player, but make no mistake about it, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is finished as a top class player. The man is nearly 39 years of age, saw his time in Europe ended three years ago. Milan, seven time European champions, have essentially dragged this man out of semi retirement from a league where Carlos Vea is a superstar and handed him a big fat contract. I know it's not quite as bad as offering Fabio Barini a deal, but still, to me this smacks of desperation. Patrick Cotrone to Fiorentina. Yeah, Patrick Cotrone is back in Italy. I don't know, to me this came as a bit of a surprise. Yeah, there was talk that the former AC Milan forward was homesick, but in the last couple of months, I thought he was beginning to find his feet at Wolves. Apparently not, because just five minutes into a four-year contract of a £16.2 million deal, he's just been spat back to Italy on an 18-month loan deal with Fiorentina, with an obligation to buy at the end of it. Asmer Begovic to AC Milan. Again, I already touched on AC Milan embarrassing themselves in the transfer market in the past. Now they've gone cap in hand to fish for rubbish off the Bournemouth bench. Yeah, I get that Begovic has experience of, of warming the benches for top clubs, but he's currently 32, error prone, and just spent the last six months on loan a carrot bag out the back house of Azerbaijan. But then again, maybe I'm being too harsh. All he's gonna do is just replace Pepe Reina stuck on the bench. Fabio Barini to Verona. Finally, a transfer that makes a modicum of sense. I've never seen such a bang average player possess such a glittering CV. Tell this man at the start of his career that he ended up playing for Chelsea, Liverpool, AC Milan, scoring cup finals and derby day wins, the lad would assume he'd go on to become a world beater. Well, not quite, and now Barini, the lad famous for eating his hand like a turkey sandwich, has wound up at Verona at 28 years of age, a club halfway down Serie A. I guess this isn't a weird deal, but considering this man clearly is the best agent in the world football, I'm a little surprised it wasn't to another European giant, Javier Hernandez to LA Galaxy. So it's official, Javier Hernandez's time in Europe is finished. He's finally accepted it. After starring as a super sub for Manchester United, then bagging in a bunch of goals in Germany, he's now wound up chucked out to spend his twilight years on the beaches of LA. It's a shame Hernandez never really lived up to the early promise, but when given his chance to lead the line at West Ham, he flopped. His six months in Spain he yielded just one goddamn goal, but hey, at least he can retire saying he played for two of the biggest clubs on the planet and scored over 50 goals for Mexico. So it's not a terrible career by any means. Ashley Young did Berlin. Listen, I think Ashley Young deserves credit for somehow managing to carve out a nearly nine year career at Old Trafford, although he was definitely helped by his arrival coinciding with one of the bleakest periods in the club's recent history. Listen, I hope Antonio Conte wins Inter Berlin the league to finally break the monopoly of success at Juventus, but is this really the way to do it? Strengthen your title bid with the purchase of Ashley Young, a 34 year old big shift right back stuffed on the Manchester United bench? It's a bit like Rafa Nadal strengthening his bid for a Wimbledon title by downing a six pack of bleach. Christoph Piatek to Hertha Berlin. Remember when Christoph Piatek was suddenly being linked with every big club on the planet? Back when he scored 19 goals in his first 21 games at Genoa after being plucked straight out of the Polish fourth division. Suddenly he was getting linked with Barcelona. Instead he was whisked off to AC Milan where it never really happened for him. And now he's wound up with Hertha Berlin, a club anxiously hovering over the Bundesliga relegation zone. Apparently the man rejected offers from Crystal Palace, Aston Villa and Spurs to wind up in a German relegation battle and play up front with Solomon Kalou. Oh yeah, he still exists. I don't really get it. For Christ's sake, he signed up to play in a team who willingly chucked Dedrick Boyata into their defence. Christian Eriksen to Inter Milan. Look, obviously this is a very good signing for Inter Milan and could actually be what swings the balance in the Serie A title race, but I have to say, Inter Milan aside, every one involved in his transfers played their cards terribly. Eriksen, he looks quite happy to sign for Inter Milan, right? Yeah, offer him this deal last summer and the chance to line out alongside Victor Moses and Ashley Young and he'd have laughed you out the building. This is a man who last summer had his heart set on a big money move to Real Madrid. Didn't get it and instead sucked his way to this conclusion. After his behaviour over the last few months, he had no option but to stubbornly move on from Spurs. Are Inter Milan, a club who haven't played a Champions League knockout tie since 2012, are they really at a higher level than Spurs? And similarly, when Ericsson could have been sold for 50 million last summer, is Daniel Levy really happy with receiving less than 20 million quid? This was an example of how not to handle a transfer 
transfer from all parties. Yannick Carrasco to Atletico Madrid. Yannick Carrasco is lucky, very, very lucky. I think he accepts now that taking two years out of European football to go and collect a bunch of cash in China, very unnecessarily risky and almost destroyed his career forever. He probably realised he made a mistake when his debut coincided with an 8-0 defeat to Shanghai. For Christ's sake, look at the proof. This man was once rated as one of the most dangerous and confident wingers in Europe, and yet, after taking two years out of Dalian Fang, he was suddenly being offered deals the likes of Crystal Palace. How degrading for a man of his talents. Potentially signing up in a club where their only top class player of any real quality can't wait to leave. The fact Carrasco has been offered a route back to Atletico Madrid on loan, he's very lucky and probably can't believe his luck. Emery Chan to Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, here we find Emery Chan, a used up piece of Juventus Deadwood, clearly aghast at having been dropped from their Champions League squad in favour of Aaron Ramsey, winding up at Borussia Dortmund on loan. But not only that, apparently the German midfielder turned down Manchester United to do it. So that makes both him and Erling Haaland coming to the same conclusion. For me, this takes a bit to get my head around because for the last 10 years, Dortmund have always been presumed as the selling club, losing their top talent each and every year, usually the Bayern Munich, but also the likes of Man United as well. Shinji Kagawa, Henrik Mkhitaryan, for Christ's sake, even Jaden Sancho was linked with Old Trafford earlier this season. But now, as the tide turned, when the likes of Chan and Haaland would rather move to Dortmund, lads, are Dortmund suddenly a more attractive proposition than Man United? Kevin Prince Boateng to Besiktas. It seems every single time I do one of these videos, Kevin Prince Boateng winds up featuring in it. The man is the weirdest CV. From warming the bench at Spurs to linking up with Jurgen Klopp at Borussia Dortmund, from getting relegated at Portsmouth to playing Champions League football with AC Milan, from being stuck out in Germany with Schalke to signing for Las Palmas, something that sounds like a club med resort, from scoring goals for Germany under 19s to facing his brother at a World Cup, from swapping Sassuolo for a loan deal at Barcelona, and now at the age of 32, the well travelled Fiorentina forward is now linked up on loan of Besiktas. Honest to Christ, this man must live out of a goddamn suitcase. He's moved clubs 12 times in his career. Good God, I hope he doesn't have a cat. Oh yeah, by the way, lads, this is your annoying mid-video reminder. Try and get 400k as soon as possible. So if you like to smash the subscribe button and help me on, on the battle to overtake football daily, then you would honestly be the greatest person on planet Earth. Anyway, back into the video. Let's take a look at some more weird deals across Europe. Rolando Aaron's to Motherwell. Yeah, not really an exotic European transfer, but lads, Scotland is still technically Europe, so this one counts, all right? I just want to take a minute for a second and mourn the career of one Rolando Aaron's. I remember back in 2014, this kid sprung on the scene, scored a goal for Newcastle at the Etihad, and suddenly, half the Geordies across the globe were tipping this kid for superstardom. Yeah, not quite. It's 36 years later, Aaron's is now 24, and while still contracted to Newcastle, has now been spat out on his fifth successive loan spell inside the last two years. Hellas Verona, Slovan Liberec, Sheffield Wednesday, Wickham Wanderers, and now Motherwell. Motherwell! Aaron's must look at his cousin Max playing week in, week out in the Premier League and be sick to his stomach. What has happened to this man's promising career? He's now spending this season on the benches of Wickham and Motherwell. Oh, Aaron's, he probably feels like slapping his agent across the face with a wet fish. Nicholas Gaitan to Lille. Hey, remember Nicolas Gaitan, one of those promising Argentina stars that were once upon a time linked to big moves across Europe? Yeah, well, the former Boca Juniors and Benfica star, who followed Carrasco from Madrid to Deli Fang, has now found his way back to Europe, swapping Chicago Fire, where his teammates range from Bastian Schweinsteiger to Bobby Shuttleworth, whoever the hell he is, for Lille, where at the age of 31, he's now linking up with Loic Remy, Jose Fond, and Renato Sanchez. Oh yeah, and they also have a goalkeeper called Leonardo Jardim. What a bizarre squad. Steven and Zanzi to Ren. Yeah, I guess this is the year where Steven and Zanzi's stock has taken a tumble. I guess we're Never getting those blockbuster moves to Arsenal and Barcelona, finally the former Blackburn and Stoke midfielder's career, which seemed to be on a steadily upwards trajectory for years, for Christ's sake he went from partnering Glenn Whelan to lifting the World Cup, now he's finally on the downturn, winding up a Rennes on a loan deal from Roma. When you're not deemed good enough for Roma, a club who are almost tricked into offering Jack Rodwell a deal, that's when you know. Angelino to RB Leipzig. Yeah, this is an odd one. Listen, I know Angelino wasn't great for Man City this season, but left back is that club's gigantic Achilles heel. It's a glaring weakness, and is anyone that confident in the club lifting the Champions his league with either Ben Mendy or Alexander Zinchenko stuffed in the left back. It's a decent loan signing for RBC Lipstick, I guess, but why does City sanction the loan deal when left back is their weakness? Anyway, that's the end of the video, lads. Let me know what weird European transfer did I miss out on. Tell me if you know of any weird deals that happened across Europe this month. Let me know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.